Hold some. Cheers. Um, right. Kanji Initiative has been going for too many years. It's been, I've been doing it about 15 years. Um, there are some people even in the audience that have known me that long, and it's painful. Um, what essentially Kendra is about is about creating a more harmonious distribution system for uh, media. And in this case, we're looking at music to begin with. And this is a part that maybe a lot of you aren't aware of if you're not musicians or in the music industry, but there's as a, as, a, as a content owner, as a musician, there's a lot that you have to do with your rights. You have to register your rights. You have to negotiate rights. So there's a lot of back office stuff that you need to do that, that, is, that is very painful. And my desire is to make it easy for artists and, and music makers to actually make music and therefore do less admin and also get more revenue to actually be able to not have to have that second job. So music business is not bad, it just could be improved. And before I get there, I'm going to give you a little bit of um, something that happened. Has anyone heard of the Global Repertoire Database before they just read it there? No. no. Okay. It's a really interesting thing that happened. The Global Repertoire Database, um, this is an EU document by the way, progress update, March 2013. That's the Global Repertoire Database is going to bring all of the rights all into one place. It's a six billion dollar industry. My God. <laughs> um, and and it's, in, it's loads of stuff, involves loads of people, and it was brilliant. And that's the website. And um, then the, something went wrong. They couldn't work it out. They couldn't make it all work. It collapses. And that's the website now. So, they tried to bring it all together. They tried to centralize everything and it didn't work because there's too much vested interest in what was going on. So, we've got to think better than that. Let's go back to, but it could be improved. Okay, so why not connect all of the different service providers, the content manage, the, the, the copyright management organizations like the PRS and the MCPS, does anyone know any of these? Shout them out. PPL, ASCAP. Yes. Yes? Yes. Gamer. Okay. So, um, why not just connect them all with a protocol? Well, how do you do that? Um, there's good examples of protocols. I don't know if you tell you that. MIDI, actually, the music industry knows about protocols. It really does, but it doesn't really understand that oh, that's a protocol, but they know how to connect all their instruments together, and if you press a button there, and it makes a sound there, and it really works. So they really get it. You just need to explain that. <laughs> so let's make a protocol for music business logic, for transactions, for copyright. And so that's what um, Kendra's doing with Kendra Hub. And so we want to create a dashboard app that allows um, content owners, artists, bands, record labels, marketers, uh, managers to manage production, marketing, sales, um, to, map, to map collaborations with each other, to track the samples that are used and by other people and to track the samples that they use themselves, and to interact with fans and, and, and um, where well, you can read it, and to, I think more, more importantly than anything, to bring back, to, to um, um, integrate with external sources like Spotify and YouTube bring back reports and integrate them. Okay, so beginning of last year we got, 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 got a grant from the TSB, uh, which was the te Technology Strategy Board, and it's now called Innovate UK, because they like to rebrand things and make them look new. It's a government organization in the UK, and it, our funding finishes middle of this year, so I've really got to um, rush and, and, and get things done. And I'm going to show you a bit about what we've done. What shall I show you first? Um, yeah, let, let's 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 start with the actual app. So what we're doing, we're we're we're, we're prototyping the whole thing in Drupal because it's kind of a quick way of getting things going. We're kind of creating a place where each artist would have their own hub, and they put their their own content metadata in it, 
and they'd uh, put their contacts in it. So, for example, let's just go through it. Okay, hope the internet works. Ah, yes. Okay, so they have a calendar for all the gigs that they did and all the songs that they played in each gig because that's important um, information that, although I don't think in the UK you actually report that, but I know in France, for instance, every um, restaurant has to actually report exactly which songs that they play. I think. I've been told. Second-hand information. I don't know it personally. Okay, so, sorry? In Spain also. In Spain also. There you go. Different rules for different countries. It's great. You have different copyright rules for different countries. And it's, it's a real, this is why the G, GID would have been so good, because it would have centralized everything. But they couldn't do it. So let's see. Contacts. Okay, just a small point I want to make here. We import contacts from Facebook, Google, and LinkedIn. That's just something I'd just like to posit as an idea that integrate into the current social system so that users find it easy to come into these systems. It's not having to break all the ties that they've made, that they have to leave all the content and leave all, the, leave all the content and leave all their friends. Make it easy for them to import. And the nice thing about, for instance, with Facebook is that um, they, they have really good APIs. So let's use them. Let, let that be even one of the first few things that we actually do. So then we're truly not silos ourselves, because we don't want to be silos ourselves. Okay, let's get, let's get down to business, as they say. Okay, um, let's look at a song. Let's look at Stairway to Heaven. Okay, Stairway to Heaven, we've modeled it. This is not a direct import from any multi-track recorder. Um, it's... It's our idea. We've taken the rights. So there's a composition rights. There's the, and I'm not an expert, please, but I'm just learning as I go. So there's composition rights, there's performance rights. Now, this is not looking brilliant. Let's see if I can make this look a bit better if I do something like that. Okay, that's a lot better. Okay, we've got a timeline <coughs> of the track. And um, it's basically. Yeah, as, as you would expect, it's, it's a multi-track. You can see all the different parts of it. And what we're suggesting is that um, you can actually then put in that information and um, you can say how much that each, each person would get as a split of the song if it was sold. That's not how it's done now, and it probably isn't how it will be done in the future, but as an option. What we want to do with Kendra Hub is be able to model what's currently done now and make it relevant for how people might want to work in the future. Give them the freedom to decide, because at the moment it's the copyright management organizations and the governments that decide how copyright is split up. Whereas we don't need to do it like that, we can actually decide for ourselves and encode those within rules, specifically per track, on a per track basis. So, what does this mean? It means that we have, um, we, we have different ways of splitting up the rights, um, and then we, you can see, we can split it up in a pie chart of, of how, how much each of the actors get, performers get, composers get. Okay, next. Uh, let's go back to our clips page. Um, let's look at, um, just, I'm just going to load an empty song so I can demonstrate adding, embedding a sample. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to embed a, a, set, a sample of Stairway to Heaven in my new track. So now I've got sliders there, and you can see that there's the full, here's the full track down there. Yeah, does that make sense? <laughs> St stop me if it's really just like, what the heck are you talking about? So I'm going to move the sliders, and it's going to automatically um, refresh the page, which is not very snazzy, but it's the best we could do with Drupal currently using this kind of interface, and it would be lovely if it's all very much more dynamic. But now you can see there's only three stems here. And that's because it's it, that, those are the only stems happening uh, within the constraints of, of 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 those sliders. So and it recalculates the splits. So this is if I, if I if I've got one track over here and then I've got another track over here and I want to take a sample of that track and I'm put it into this track, then it can drag not only who the performers are but also the copyright information behind them because it's different. Because say for example. David Bowie, actually, the copyright might be assigned to David Bowie, Inc., Corporated, Limited, in the Cayman Islands. You know, that's the legal entity behind that performer's five minutes. Okay, great. Awesome. Um, right. Very quickly, then.
So now let's go to um, a song that has loads of um, samples. Well, it doesn't have loads, it has a couple. We've got a sample of Stairway to Heaven, we've got a start sample of Under Pressure. And um, is that including questions or total? Okay, so we've got different samples there, and what our algorithm can do, it can drill down through the samples, through the samples, so we can have samples within samples within samples, and we'll still know exactly, exactly who's played and who the rights owners are for that whole track. And it could be hundreds if you're, if you're sampling bits and pieces. Now, the important thing about that is, if I sample a track and I don't get clearance, then, and it's successful, I can be sued, and wouldn't it be much nicer if that was all sorted beforehand? And there are ways where, where you, can, you can request sync rights. So we're building that into it. You could actually message the, the, the rights owners and say, I want to use this. I want to use this for a wedding video. Oh, that's 50p. I want to use this for, a broad, for, for an international movie. Oh, well, that's going to be 5,000. So there's different, you can have different rules. And it could be, well, we just need to have a phone call about that. OK, so where are we? It's all open source, it's, um, it's all on GitHub, it's, it's, it's not so impressive yet because it's just Drupal and, it, and we're very, very early days. Um, Kendra Foundation owns the rights, it's a non-profit organisation, uh, it's limited by guarantee so it's not something we, we would ever be able to sell. Um, it's, we have some partners, um, Om Studio are really interesting, They're, they are um, an online collaborative studio where many people can work on the same track at the same time. I'll come back to that when it's logged in. Um, and also, who else is there? Cultural Common Society is a very interesting organisation. Uh, uh, because there seems to be people setting up alternatives to the, to the incumbent CMOs, the copyright management organisations. Right, let's go back to this, um, shall we? Okay, what are our needs? I need to do a massive outreach in the next next few next month because my funding's running out and I need to pay developers. I need to get with music people, I need to get with industry, I need to get with technologists, I need to find other open source free operate free software non profit partners like um, our friends here at the Cultural Commons Society, other people that are in this space. Um, but we're not limited to, to non-profit and, and open source, of course, because um, um, Bomb Studios not, not, uh, is closed source and it's for profit and great, cause, and we want to work with them. And um, here, here, is, here is the system. And the great thing about that is because it's all online, it's all collaborative, they know exactly who has put what into that track. So all the rights information is already there. So if we export it, which is what we're planning to do with them, then it's already there. And in fact, Kendra Hub just disappears eventually because the, the, the actual applications will become aware of all of that metadata internally. And what we really want to do is create a protocol so they can all talk to each other. And, it's, and you, as soon as you finish your mix, it gets sent off with all the rights information to, 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 the, um, to the correct con copyright management organisation. So now I did was confused. Is that including questions yeah, or not? Minutes and now we'll have questions. Great, awesome. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think um, I think thanks. I think that is there. So yeah, questions. You're saying that you need musicians. Do you do you cur curate them or do they come to you just like that? No, I need I need I need musicians who are visionaries. I need musicians who are able to say we need this and we'll put time and energy into helping you make this happen because. I'm spending my own money doing this, even though I've got, I've got a 55% grant from the UK, I'm putting my own money into it in order to match it, and um, it's non-profit. So, uh, are you in touch with the PRS as well? I'm in touch with the PRS, I'm in touch with the Copyright Hub. Are, and they, are they supporting you? Um, uh, not, not financially, it's very early days. I've been talking more to the PPL, they're interested. Um, uh, the, the, I'm going to be hot desking with the um, the copyright hub in the next couple of days. So it's 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 and that they're supported by the um, the digital catapult in the UK. But this is not just a UK project. This is a global project. So um, we we want to get partners all over the place. 
And, and yes, some will have money, some will have contacts, and somewhere along the line will create enough of an emphasis to, 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 to make it happen. And the interesting thing about this, if no one is asking a question, is that what we're building here is really a generic model for a distributed open value network. Yes? Does it make, to me, it feels like Xanadu and um, the semantic web. In what way? Do you, do you know either of those? Absolutely. And yes, it's using, I wouldn't say it's using Xanadu technology, but it's definitely well, using semantic. So it's using Xanadu yeah, technology. Yeah, the concept is yeah. basically saying, how do we make it so that value is communicated through an infinite um, Complex web, yeah. Well, that's really funny because that's what open value networks are all about, and and they're really becoming to the, in their own because of fab labs. So it's you know, physical objects. Are everyone's thinking. A lot of people in the open value network are thinking about physical objects and like who's the owners and what's what's the production process. But you can apply the same logic to music, and and it's amazing because there's an actual whole market. There's six billion dollars of of industry there waiting to be cleaned up. Not, 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 not cleaned up as in made. Deparasitized. Yeah, made, 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 <laughs> made more harmonious. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, considering you are in an open source peer-to-peer uh, convention. Yes. And then, like, you, if you're making music in this environment, you generally hate copyright and you don't want to pay any rights, or you don't care about the rights. You just want to perform, or you just want to go around and play your music. And a lot of people here are talking about making their own social network. I really favor to see how connecting to Spotify, Facebook, Google, and paying copyright to other people connects with the subject. Good question. That's your choice as an artist. There are other people out there who may choose that they want to be an artist and they may want to just actually stick their whole life they don't want to do anything else but make beautiful, beautiful music. If other people sample paying copyrights for them. That that's that's their choice. We, we, we don't we don't want we don't want to we don't want to say that anyone has to be like anywhere else. Actually, my personal thing is I want everyone to choose the life they want to live because I think, given everyone is actually free to choose exactly how they want to do it, then that live their life, then then we live in a more harmonious world. And you know you know I've also got a company called World Peace Now, so you know I'm I'm into making that happen. Um, there's another aspect which is. We need to adhere to copyright law because actually that's the foundation of the open source movement. Is you know if there wasn't really strong copyright law, then then Richard Stallman wouldn't have been able to create the GPL. Um, and and yeah yeah, it's freedom of choice, freedom of choice always. And and if people don't, you know if people want to say I want to give this away under a, under a, a, a Commons license. Great, then th that's a license that can be used as well. It's not saying that it has to, has to be for paid for, but I want to make it so that it actually applies to what's happening now and also gives it the ability for people to experiment with how it could, you know, they, then they can play around with, oh, I'll try, uh, with this tune I'll do open, open comments with this one. But it, the problem at the moment is I have to go to a different system, but if you could all do it from one system, one harmonious platform, or protocol, I should say, that could allow you to do free, Pay for different, different, different kinds of um, uh, licenses. Then, then I think we're in a much better chance of then people will actually be able to plug in and plug out service providers. But at the moment, it's all, it's all kind of like come with us and we want to keep you. <coughs> Thank you very much. So, so three arms now. Okay.